Hello and welcome to album review number 13. Today I'm going to be reviewing Kerry by Radiohead. Uh, this one is one that I've actually gotten into quite recently, uh, over the last couple of months. I've really gotten into this album specifically. Uh, Radiohead, I've, I've known about them since I was really young. Uh, just just a wee bit of background uh, of, of how I sort of get into them. They're, they're a band that I've known for a really long time. I've known about them since I was like seven or eight. I saw, I think it was the Benz. I saw the Benz in a, in a shop somewhere. Um, and I just sort of thought it was a weird looking album cover and all that. Uh, I didn't really think too much of them though. Um, but I never really thought specifically to listen to them. Uh, once I really got proper proper into music in my teens um i kind of don't really I, I sort of always viewed them as a sort of indie band sort of like oasis i thought they were similar to oasis i'm not into like oasis or blur or anything like that i'm not really into sort of british you know I'm, the brit pop movement of the 90s i'm really not into it i think when it comes to the 90s i'm much more into american stuff like soundgarden and tool and pearl jam it's much more my thing in the 90s um so yeah, so yeah, I was never, I never really thought to listen to them, to the to Radiohead. But then, uh, I think it was about early twenty thirteen, I was watching The Sopranos and um, just putting that on. I was watching The Sopranos and season four, episode two, I think, um, Kade, the title track, plays uh, during the credits. And I thought it was really good. I thought it was really unique and interesting. I just thought it sounded really cool. Um, so I looked up, well, what band's this? I went on Wikipedia and, you know, Kid A by Radiohead plays during the, the credit sequence. I thought that's really cool. Um, I can't remember if I bought the album or I just downloaded that one track, but I ended up buying the album ages ago. But I never thought to listen to it. You know, back back then I was one of those people. Like, if, I know there's loads of people like this. They'll, they'll buy an album because they like one song on it. I'm not saying that's a bad thing to do. If you like one song on an album, then yeah, buy the whole thing. But you should listen to the whole thing as well. You know, uh, I I don't have a problem with people buying a whole album because they like one song on it. I mean, say you don't say it hasn't been released as a single. You know, you just like having an album. I've, I bought loads of albums because I only like one song, but I. I I do then go on to listen to the whole thing. Um, the Valley um, by Los Lobos, that was another one. Uh, I liked that one song, also from The Sopranos. Uh, so I bought The Town and the City and liked the whole album. So, you know, uh, anyone out there who buys albums just for one song, you should get the whole album to listen because, I mean, if you like that one song, I'm sure you'll like other ones. So, yeah, years ago I bought, I bought Kiddy. It's been sitting in my CD collection for about five years and then I decided about two months ago you know what, I'm actually going to sit and listen to this whole thing straight through. And it's it's fantastic. It really, really is. It's it's a brilliant, brilliant album. It's 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 experimental, it's it's weird, it's trippy, it's it's complex at times. It's I'd consider it a progressive album. i uh, one of the things about prog rock is it has a million different definitions. Ask ask a dozen people and they'll all give you a different answer. Um for me, it's just sort of experimental, complex rock. Um, you know, I don't really think you could you could pinpoint a certain sound because you know you get like classical prog, and then you get like jazz prog, then you get hip, like metal prog. It's, it's it's all different. It's all unique. Every prog rock band sounds different, and um, I think if two prog rock bands sound the same, then one of them can't be prog because they're not progressing. You know what I mean? They're not progressing music. I think prog rock should be inherently experimental. If a band isn't trying something new, they're not progressive. And every album should be experimental as well. If you're just doing what you did the last album, how are you progressing? You know? So bands like, you know, I've talked about them before, Dream Theater, Transatlantic's later albums, The Whirlwind and Kaleidoscope, they're you're just they're just not moving forward, so I don't see how they're progressive. But this is a very, very progressive album. Um you know, I just feel like, again, quickly want to go back to that. Uh, Sempty by Transatlantic. Um, I like Transatlantic. I think their first two albums were much better and much more progressive than their re most recent two. They've only released four albums. Uh, there was like an eight-year hiatus between their second and third album uh, after, Neil, after Neil Morse went religious. But um, 
the first two albums are just much much better they're more progressive they're more experimental they're more unique the, uh, the whirlwind and kaleidoscope they've got barely anything new or interesting going on in them um so but but those first two albums i mean they've always been a retro prog band they've never been super progressive and always trying new things you know transatlantic have always been a sort of harking back to the early days of prog um, that album came out in 2000 and this came out in 2000. This is far more forward thinking and progressive than Sempty by Transatlantic, which is a great album. I like it, but this is f much more forward thinking, much more experimental, but this isn't classed as prog and that album is. So, you know, I think, I think <laughs> I'd say the vast majority of progressive rock definitions aren't particularly right, but I, I wouldn't even call it a genre. But anyway. Kid A is uh, Radiohead's fourth album released in 2000 and it marked a huge musical uh, direction change for the band. Those first three albums they did were on the 90s, um, Pablo Honey, The Bends and OK Computer. Uh, I've li I haven't listened to any of those, those albums straight through. I've listened to all the singles and I've listened to quite maybe a few other ones and they just don't do anything for me. Songs like Paranoid Android, uh, Creep, songs like that, they just don't really grab me because they're a bit too indie, they are they feel a bit droney, you know. Um, it's just not my kind of music. Well, I'm not saying it's bad, it's just not my thing. But when they moved into this much more complex electronic style with Kid A, that is much more my thing. So, uh, you know, it's sort of, I think a Radiohead is kind of like Genesis in the way that you could split their music right down the middle. Like Genesis, you could, you know, go from 69 to 78 or 76, yeah, 76, 77 and cut that right down the middle because you look at their stuff in the 80s, it's not even the same band, you know, it's, it's to totally different. So I'd kind of say Radiohead are a bit like that. Uh, there's 10 tracks on the album. First track is Everything in Its Right Place, which instantly grabs your attention with a sort of electronic, sort of melodic sort of thing going on. And it's also in 10 4 time, so instantly there's a complexity to the album. The album immediately starts in a complex time signature. There's electronics going on with Tom York's voice, there's effects going on in his voice, and that happens throughout the whole album. Um, it's just sort of a slow sort of introduction to the album but it's very eerie very um very melodic very very interesting very um very strange a wee bit sinister that's kind of what radiohead's music's kind of kind of always been like um but the, the reason i like kid a so much compared to their earlier stuff is because it was kind of sinister and kind of i don't want to say depressing but sort of sad but it was just sort of like norm, more normal rock, while this has a lot more layers to it, lush sounds over the top, and I just think it's 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 more much more my taste. It, it much more appeals to me. Uh, the second track is the title track "Kid A," which which was the one I've loved for a, a, a long, long time. I've loved it for about five years. This song, so this one kind of stands out to me. Um, it is probably my favourite on the album, but there's another two that that um, might be just as good uh, when I talk about them. Um, you know, it, it, do, it does have a bit of an unfair advantage, the fact that I've loved it for a long, long time. And again, that happens with any album. If you buy an album for one song, you're going to kind of immediately be attached to it. Uh, you're going to, sorry, immediately be sort of attached to that song. It's... It tends to happen with me that if I buy, I buy an album with one song, no matter how good the other ones are, I still tend to sort of prefer that one. Um, another example would be Django Django's first album, Waveforms. I heard that on Grand Theft Auto V, so I bought the album. The whole album's brilliant, but, but Waveforms just still clinches it. But I, I wonder if I'd ha heard the album before I'd ever heard Waveforms, would I still think that? Same thing with this. If I'd, if, if I'd played this album having never listened to the title track, would I still find it my favourite? No idea. Absolutely no idea. But I know I do like it. I, I mean, I, I liked it back then. I obviously like it now. I, I know I, I, I do love it. Um, it's a very, very unique song. Very strange. 
Um, again, sound effects over the voices, weird lyrics. There's a sort of discordant glockenspiel sound going on throughout the whole, throughout a lot of it. Um, it's probably made on, on probably an electronic sort of thing. They probably made it on computers that sound, but it sounds like a discordant glockenspiel, a glockenspiel that's like broken in a way, but it totally works. Um, again, the voice is weird. The, there's some beautiful keyboard going on. There's a great bass line. It's a very beautiful song. It's very, uh, it's very touching. I think the music. It has this sort of major sort of feel to it. Uh, there's there's not that many minor chords. There's a lot of major chords on this song, and it's quite uplifting. Uh, the lyrics are a bit strange. Uh, I'm not really sure what they're about, but I think it's quite an uplifting song. Uh, a lot of people view Radiohead as sort of depressing. I think it's, some of the songs are kind of more uplifting. I think Kenny is one of them. It has a very sort of uplifting sort of bass bass line to, towards the end, and the wee sort of glockenspiel bit that I talked about. I think that sounds kind of optimistic. Uh, but that's my opinion. Track three. Is the national anthem, which again immediately starts with a killer bass line. Do 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 do. This one sounds a wee bit more normal so far. This is the first song on the album that could actually be considered a rock song, uh, you know, because it's got a drum beat. There's that, you know, it's that there's actually sort of a, a beat with a drum kit going on. The first one's just sort of weird electronic noises, and then and then Kid A is sort of indescribable. Um, but this is the first one that you could actually call a rock song. And uh, it sounds like it's going to be the only sort of straightforward one on the album that doesn't have any surprises. But then all of a sudden you get the saxophone part that's just totally out of nowhere and totally caught me off guard. I was like, whoa, when the sax bit came in. And I was pleasantly surprised. I love that part. Uh, having a bit of sax, um, adding a wee bit of jazz fusion, a wee bit of jazz elements works so much. You hear it in loads of other bands, progressive bands, that add a wee bit of jazz and it just totally lights up the whole song. Um, so I, pro I, I, I don't have too much to say about um, the national anthem, um, other than the, the saxophone part. I just love that bit so much. But I'll, I'll, the whole track's good. Again, that bass line is tremendous. Uh, track four is How to Disappear Completely, which, as far as I know, is Tom York's favourite Radiohead song that they've ever done. I think Kid A is actually his favourite album. Um, it's not my favourite song on the album. It's a sad sort of acoustic sort of song with some atmospherics going on in the background. Um, it's a nice song, it's a good song, but it's not my favourite on the album. Um, Tom York probably has more of an emotional sort of connection to it than other people. Uh, I just personally... Sorry, it's my, my battery. Um... I just personally don't like it as much as uh, other songs on the album. It's a, it's a nice song. Again, it's acoustic. It's somber. Um, I was just like, I just want, every song on the album does kind of sound different. But this one is more straightforward. It is kind of what you've, uh, it's not totally experimental or out there. And it's sort of the first song out of the four, out of the album that sort of has that. The first three songs have these totally surprising uh, kind of out there parts. And then this one's a bit more accessible. And um, I was just expecting the whole album to sort of be totally crazy, but uh, it's nice to have a you know a, a wee bit of accessibility every now and then. Um, track five is Tree Fingers, and it is a instrumental, a very beautiful ambient piece that sort of reminds me of, uh, in some ways, of Aphex Twins um, ambient, more ambient music. And it reminds me a wee bit of Robert Fripp's soundscapes as well, at some parts. It's very beautiful, very, um, again, very optimistic sounding. Uh, well, it's another thing I like about Kid A is that it, it sort of loses the the depressing sort of feel of the earlier albums. I don't feel like there's much hope or much optimism at all in the earlier Radiohead songs, but these ones have a bit more of an optimistic sort of positive feel to them. Though they're still sad and dark songs. I like sad and dark songs that have a positive feel to them. Like um, Prison Sex by Tool. If you don't know what that's about, it's talking about one of the darkest subjects ever. But it has a positive message, you know, and I, I like that. Um, track 6 is Optimistic, which, again, it has an optimistic sort of 
sort of something you want to tap your feet to, sort of beat. Um, it's, it's probably one of the more simplistic ones on the album, but it's also a standout track for me. It goes like... It's very good. It's a very good song. I can... I think that one would be good to hear live, um, and I can. I think. I think. Um, I think it's quite an underrated song. I, I don't hear many people talking about how good that song is, but uh, it's a. It's a very. It's a very good song, and I, it's not. Again, it's not totally experimental or anything, but it's. It's interesting. It keeps up with the theme of the album of every song sounding different. Uh, number seven. Is in limbo, which. Other than the title track, may actually be my favourite song on the album. And I've heard a lot of people say that this is the worst song on the album. A lot of people say, well, one of them had to be the worst. Sorry, In Limbo. You know, but I love In Limbo. I think it's it's better than uh, almost the entire album. I think it has such a beautiful melody. It has one of the most beautiful melodies I've ever heard. And the way it just kicks in. It's got a wee intro of a like... Sort of sounds like... And then it just goes... And it's beautiful. I've, I've saw someone do a, a beautiful piano uh, cover of it. Um, I don't know why I did that. It's on guitar, but the, the pia this piano cover that somebody did was so good. I just sort of imagine it being on piano. But it's a, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful song, and it's it's quite complex, that rhythm. Um, I think it's in 6-4, but I know the melody, I mean, the melody, it sounds quite complex. I couldn't pinpoint exactly why, but when I hear it, it sounds complex. Uh, like I said, it's in 6-4, so it's not in the most simplistic time signature, but not the most complex either. Um, I think it's a very, very interesting song, and very beautiful. In Limbo, I'd say, is the best song on the entire second half of the album. I think it's, I think it's tremendous. Number 8, and I'm going to probably piss anyone off who's a big radio head fan watching this, Idiotech is my personal least favourite on the album. Um, I find it a wee bit repetitive. Uh, and that drum beat, I don't know what it is. The sound of the drum beat, it gives me a headache. I just don't like that sound, that that sort of sound it's making. I'm sorry, I just I just don't. Um, I think the song is a bit repetitive. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, and it's it's just uh, personally, I'd say it's the weakest song on the album. Uh, again, what like that like other people said about in Limbo, one of them had to be the weakest, and I'd say personally, Idiotech just appeals to me the least. Number nine's Morning Bell, which is again in the complex time signature. I think it's in five four. Um, it does have a sort of a bit of a penultimate feel to it. It's a bit more somber than other songs on the album. Uh, sort of again straightforward, sort of five four beat. Well, five four is complex, but it sort it doesn't really change much. It sort of sticks to a like that. Um, not much to say about it. It's a it's a good song. Um, I don't like it quite as much as uh, in Limbo, um, or the National Anthem, but it's a good, it's a good song. Good. It's the last proper like rock song on the album. Uh, then the last track is a motion picture soundtrack, which is a sort of again a sort of ambient, um, sort of song. It, uh, Tom York sings over this sort of keyboard melody, I think. And uh, there's not much. I don't think there's any drumming or anything like that in it. There's some again ambient atmospheric sounds uh, then there's a pause and then you hear another wee bit of music I think at the end um, so yeah that's 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 Kid A it's, it's a tremendous tremendous album that I totally overlooked for years and I'm now I've just actually today I ordered Amnesiac um, so I'm definitely going to listen to Radiohead's stuff from this album onwards Again, I've heard the stuff from pre Kid A and it just doesn't really do anything for me. So I don't I don't think liking Kid A and liking Amnesiac would and um and Rainbows or is it called Rainbows? I think it's just called Rainbows. Or a Moon Shaped Pool. I don't think I'm gonna immediately love their earlier albums just because I like them. Um they, they just don't really appeal to me. But uh I, it, I think it'd be hard to find a Radiohead album uh, that I'm gonna listen to better than this one. This is set a really high bar. And I'd consider it a progressive album. I'd consider it a progressive rock album. So, I mean, you, you can't say it's not progressive. I mean, it's, it's progressing. There's a lot of experimental stuff going on here. It's one of the most experimental albums I've ever heard. And such a breath of fresh air, I'd say. Um, after sort of being a bit bogged down last year by... I listened to a wee bit too much retro prog last year. And I was sort of 
starting to feel that the bands I was listening to weren't really innovating. I'm starting to hear sort of the same thing again. So listen, going outside of the sort of modern prog thing and listening to some other experimental bands has really sort of uh, made me feel better about that. So yeah, that's Kid A. I think it's one of their, it's, it's a brilliant, brilliant album. Probably one of the best albums I've ever heard. Um, every song on it's great, apart from in my opinion, Idiotech. Personally, just don't really like it that much. Um, yeah, brilliant, brilliant album from a, a band that I just sort of overlooked for a long, long time. One of the reasons that I did get into them is because sort of Stephen Wilson talks about them a lot, and hearing loads of interviews with him, I thought, well, maybe I should give them a listen. So I finally, you know, finally give this a listen, and it's brilliant. It is brilliant. So um, thanks for watching. Uh, and uh, I think I might do an Iron, another Iron Maiden one next time. We'll see. Uh, I might do another one that's just sort of talking about in music in general. But we'll see. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching.